we've defined distance, position, and displacement. We've identified the symbols that are associated with those quantities, the units, which the standard units for all three of those would be meters, and whether each of them is a vector or a scalar. Now we want to move on to three more quantities, time, speed, and velocity. Time is that variable that, well, everybody knows what it means, but nobody can define it. I've tried to define it before, and I have never come up with a good definition of time, nor could I ever find a good definition of time that somebody else has come up with. Like we, but we all know what it means, right? We're not going to worry about defining time. We will, however, identify the symbol for time. Time can be either t or delta t. t represents a specific time. It is 2.19 p.m. That's a t. It is 2.54 p.m. That's t. Delta t is the difference between two times or the interval of time. Four minutes have passed. Right? Not, it's not 204. That's a, that's a t. But delta t would be four minutes have passed since something's happened. Right? An interval of time. So make sure you know the difference between t and delta t. The units for time are going to be seconds. And time will always be a scalar for us. Because there's no direction, at least in the typical sense of direction, associated with time. We don't say 38 seconds to the right, or we don't say 4 minutes south. Time is a scalar. It's just a number. Speed, we define as how fast something moves. The symbol for speed is a lowercase v, a small v. There is a capital V in another physics quantity, but it's called voltage or potential difference. We don't do that in physics 20. Little, small v is the only v that we deal with in physics 20, and that represents speed. The units for speed are typically meters per second, although sometimes we can use other units as well. And speed would be, once again, a scalar. And finally, velocity. Velocity is how fast something moves as well, but there's a direction associated with it. More specifically, we define it as the rate of change of position. The rate of change of position. Its symbol is v with an arrow over it, meaning it's a vector quantity. And the symbol of the, sorry, the units that we use for velocity are just like for speed, meters per second. Now this definition for velocity takes us to an equation. The first equation that we see on our data sheet in the top left-hand corner looks like this. V is equal, velocity, or v, is equal to, well, the, the rate of change of position. It's going to be change in position, or displacement, divided by time. Now, sometimes we're given displacement and time, or for speed, by the way, distance and time. Sometimes we're not given the value for distance or displacement. Sometimes we need to find it, sometimes, by saying displacement is equal to displacement 1 plus displacement 2, or final position minus initial position. That's what we've been doing for two days, right? Finding displacement, finding distance. Now we're going to have to use that, worksheet number one and what we've learned for the last couple of days. We're going to have to use that to find distance or displacement and then sub it into a new equation for speed or for velocity. <coughs> Let's take a look at example number one. We touched on this on Friday, but we just didn't have time to finish it off. It says Regina is 600 kilometers west of Winnipeg. That's where Regina is, right? Like Regina hasn't moved anywhere. The position of Regina is not changing. Regina does not have a displacement. 
Regina has a location. It has a position. We're going to call that D1, my initial, or sorry, DI, my initial position. By the way, I'm going to define west as positive this time. Usually I define east as positive, but since everything's to the west, I'm going to make west positive. DI is 600 kilometers west of Winnipeg. Calgary, which is DF, is 1,350 kilometers west of Winnipeg. I'm going to make that positive as well because we defined west as positive. It takes eight hours to go from Regina to Calgary. We want to know the average speed, and we want to know the average velocity, both of those. Speed is distance over time. What's my distance traveled there? Seven fifty, three thirteen fifty minus six hundred over eight hours. Seven fifty divided by eight hours. I think that was it to be. Is it ninety four? Ninety three point seven five. I think it is. We're going to round that to ninety four kilometers per hour. The average velocity is displacement over time, which is well. We're just going to say positive thirteen fifty minus 600 equals 94, positive 94 kilometers per hour. What does that positive mean there? Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, forward, not so much forward. But yeah, west, right? I define west as positive. So my velocity, my average velocity is 94 kilometers per hour to the west. Right? My speed, no direction. No direction. But my velocity, 94 to the west. Okay, what's another way you could write that? Instead of plus 94, we could say, use the word west, plus 94 to the west. So really, this is, like, this is exactly what we did last week, right? With distance to displacement, we had to get the distance and we had to get the displacement. And then we just divided it up by time to get the average speed and the average velocity. Example number two says a student walks 1.5 kilometers south from 7-Eleven to the dog stadium, then turns around and walks 2.5 kilometers north to HTA. It takes 45 minutes to go from 7-Eleven to HTA. What is the student's average speed and velocity? What do we got here? Well, first, you know what, I'm going to circle those because I don't want to forget to make something positive and negative. I'm going to define north as positive. What is this 1.5 kilometers? Is this a position of this person or is this a displacement? The student walks 1.5 kilometers. That's a displacement. That's not where the student is. That's the change in where the student is. We're going to call that displacement 1. Displacement 1 is negative 1.5 kilometers. And then the student turns around and walks positive 2.5 kilometers, 2.5 to the north. My time is 45 minutes. And I want to find, once again, my average speed and my average velocity. Now, I'll tell you what, usually we use meters and seconds. In this case, it's OK to use kilometers. What kind of makes sense, though, to use with kilometers? Maybe not minutes, but hours. Like you could use minutes, get a, get a unit for speed of kilometers per minute. But I think it, more, it makes more intuitive sense to use hours, right? This is 0 0.75 hours. 45 divided by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. 0 0.75 hours. Now, my average speed is distance over time. 
What's my distance traveled? How far did I walk? Four kilometers, right? It's 1.5 plus 2.5 over a time of 0 0.75. Why did I drop the sign here? Yeah, distance is a scalar direction, doesn't matter. So what do we got there? We got uh, 1.5 plus 2.5 is 4. 4 divided by 0.75 gives me 5.3 kilometers per hour. My velocity, on the other hand, is displacement over time. These aren't positions. We've got to add them up. They're displacements. Add displacements to get displacement. But this time it's negative 1.5 plus 2.5 gives me 1 over 0 0.75, 1.33 kilometers per hour. That's a positive, by the way. Why are those two numbers different? Because we change direction, right? So look at the last question just for a second, and I'll come back here and you can finish writing if you're not done yet. And the last one, we were given displacements, sorry, we were given positions. So we had to subtract positions to get displacement. In this question, we were given displacements. So we have to add displacements. To get the displacement. And then we just simply divide the displacement by the time, however we get it. So do what we did last week. Subtract positions or add displacements. And then, whenever you get that displacement or distance, divide by time. All right, let's have a look at question number one. Number one says a 1,500-kilogram car, the mass of this is irrelevant. 1,500 kilograms, who cares? It travels from Okotoks to Calgary, a distance of 35 kilometers, in time of 30 minutes. What's the average speed of the car? We are given the distance here is 35 kilometers. We are given the time here is 30 minutes, or we could say that's 0 0.50 hours. And we're looking for the speed. Not the velocity, just the speed. And the speed is distance over time. This is, a good, this is good news in this question because we already have the distance given to us. In our examples, in both of our examples, we had to find the distance and then divide by time. This time we're given the distance and then we just divide that by time. It becomes 35 kilometers over 0 0.50 hours, which gives me 70 kilometers per hour. Now, it's positive, but that doesn't mean anything because speed is always positive. So it doesn't mean 70 to the north or anything of the sort, just 70. Yep? No, you could, in a situation like that, um, that's a good question, though, actually. If, if I ever asked you, I mean, could I ask you, like, for the average velocity here? I could, yeah. And if I asked you for the average velocity, then it would be, well, negative 70 or 70 to the south, right, because Okotoks is south of Calgary. But if you're, ever, if you're ever confused about a question like that where you're not told that you're going south, it's just, you're just kind of expected to realize that, like, you can ask me that question. Like if that's a quiz or a test, and you're like, is Okotoks north of Calgary or south of Calgary? Like you can ask me that. Okay, I, guess, I mean, uh, we'd like to know the answer to that question already, right? But this isn't geography class. It's physics class. So if you can do the physics, I don't want to penalize you for that. Okay? Okay, you're going to do question number two in a moment. But before you do, I want to take a look at your equation, V is equal to delta D over delta T. 
I'm going to do a little bit of algebra on it, rearrange it. What if I'm asked to solve for displacement? Here's what you are not going to do. That ridiculous triangle that you guys learned in junior high school. Do not use that triangle. It actually does work for this equation, but it only works for three variable equations. It doesn't work for anything harder than that, and we see lots of equations that are harder than that. You've got to learn to do algebra. You've got to learn to rearrange. So let's say I want to solve for delta D here. I've got to get rid of T. If I'm solving for D, I've got to get rid of T. T is on the bottom. I've divided by T. To get rid of it, I do the opposite. What's the opposite of divide? Multiply. So let's say V times T equals delta D over T times T. What I'm doing is I divide it by T. I'm going to multiply T, both sides, by T. Those T's cancel, and I'm left with D is equal to V times T. So if you want to solve for D, there it is. Does that make sense what I did there? Dividing by T, how do you get rid of it? Multiply. Take it to the other side by multiplying. Now, if I want to solve for T, you've got to do what we just did and then get rid of the V. V is multiplied by T. How do you get rid of it? Divide. So it becomes D over V equals V times T over V. V's cancel, and I'm left with T is equal to D over V. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're saying, well, geez, that triangle that we learned back in grade 8 or grade 9 is easier than that. And you know what? For that equation, maybe it is, actually. But the problem is it only works for that equation. What I've just shown you, the idea of doing the opposite works for all of the equations that we use this year, not just this one. So get in the habit of doing that. You want to solve for D? Well, you're dividing by T, then multiply by T to get rid of it. You, um, if you want to solve for T, well, then do what we just did. Get D is equal to V times T, and then divide by V. And we end up with T is equal to D over V. Got it? All right, take a look at question number two on your worksheet now then. Let's take a look at number two now. Uh, number, number two says uh, light travels at an incredibly high speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You know how fast that is? Like that's, it says incredibly fast. Like that's, that's about a billion kilometers an hour. Like that's ridiculously fast. That's so fast that Canada, the second biggest country in the world, if you were able to put a flashlight, let's say, on one coast, let's say in Halifax, and in a mirror in Victoria, and then a mirror in Halifax, so the light would go back and forth between Victoria and Halifax, which it couldn't do because light wouldn't travel that far, right? And even if it could, because of the curvature of the Earth, here's Halifax, here's Victoria, the light would just go off into space as opposed to from Halifax to Victoria. But let's, let's assume the Earth is flat for a second, and let's assume that flashlight would go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It would make about 25 return trips Halifax to Victoria, and then back again to Halifax in one second. 25 times across Canada and back again in one second. That's how fast, that's how fast light travels. So when we say an incredibly high speed of 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second, we mean an incredibly high speed. In fact, there is nothing faster than that speed of light. Nothing faster than that 1 billion kilometers per hour. Okay, we want to know how far, far light is going to travel in one hour. We have given to us a speed, not a velocity, but a speed, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We have given to us a time interval. It's not 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The time interval is one hour. That's the, how much time has gone by when we want to find out the distance the light travels.
we want to find distance here. Um, I'm going to convert this to seconds because if we're in meters per second right here, we want to be in seconds right here as well. So I'm going to say one hour times 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, and then times 60 again, because there's 60 seconds in a minute, gives me 3,600 seconds. Yeah, remember what I showed you a few minutes ago about rearranging. V equals distance over time. You want to get D by itself? Multiply by T. Distance is V times T. So my distance now is going to be 3.00 times 10 to the 8 times 3,600. You notice that I'm in seconds and seconds. Like it doesn't matter whether you go hours or seconds or whatever, but you've got to be consistent. You've got to use the same unit. Let's multiply those on our calculator here. Follow the steps. Make sure you can do this, okay? We're going to say 3, second function, EE8, e 3 times 10 to the 8, times 3,600. 1.08. times 10 to the 12 meters. All right, one more little thing that I want to show you, and then I'm going to let you work on question three, and then you can just keep going, OK? Um, number three requires a conversion of units here. Uh, it talks about kilometers per hour, and then it talks about seconds. Let's say I've got a speed of, let's say, 72 kilometers per hour. I want to convert that to meters per second, because maybe I have a time in seconds. What I've got to really do here is convert two units, kilometers and hours, to meters and seconds. So let's do this uh, in two steps. 72 kilometers is 72,000 meters. You agree with that? Would you agree with that, guys? 72 kilometers is 72,000 meters because I multiply by 1,000. So I've got 72 kilometers per hour is the same as 72,000 meters per hour. But that's not what I want to be in. I want to be in meters per second. So now let's say, well, that's 72,000 meters divided by one hour is 3,600 seconds. Look at what I'm in now, meters per second. So it becomes 72,000 divided by 3,600 gives me 20 meters per second. So what did I really do there? You want to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second? Let's multiply by 1,000 to go from kilometers to meters, and then let's divide by 3,600. Seventy-two times 1,000 divided by 3,600 gives me 20. Is that OK? That's going to be useful to, to you in question number three. It may also be useful to you uh, in some other questions here as well. All right, let's take a look at question number three. Or have you take a look at question number three, four, five, and six. Okay, let's focus right now on the first couple of those, three and four. Five and six do get a little bit harder, but if you're really quick at these and you're, um, and you're up to number five or number six, give them a whirl. Just don't be afraid to ask me a question if you're struggling with them, okay? Right now, focusing on three and four.